Hello everyone, welcome to John Matt Classroom. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the introduction to imaginary number. We have already know what real numbers are. These are the numbers that can be represented on the number line. We also know that the real number can be broadly classified as the rational numbers and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are those can be represented as a ratio of two integers with no common factors. Irrational numbers, on the other hand, cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers when expressed in decimal notation. They are non-terminating, non-recurring decimal. Are there any other kinds of numbers? Before you answer that question, let us think about this in a systematic way. Kali refers to the table. We have three columns. We fill up the first column with the algebraic equation. We are going to use these familiar counting numbers and combined with the prime knowledge. The second column, we have the solution column, followed by the third one is the set notation. For instance, if we think of the simple equation like x minus 1 equals to 0. Basically, it has an answer which is x is equals to 1 for the solution. This is a simple example. This is still back in the number system where we have the regions of counting numbers. Here we have a set notation. The numbers are technically with the natural numbers with a symbol, capital N. Another example for the algebraic equation where we have x plus 2 is equal to 0. What is the solution for this equation? The solution would be x is equal to negative 2. Now, we have out of the counting numbers world. Now, negative 2 is not a counting number and it is not a natural number in the technical sense of the words. We denoted it as an integer with a symbol, capital Z. Another example, let's say we have 2x minus 1 equals to 0. What is the solution to this algebraic equation? The solution would be x is equal to half. What is the name for this type of solution? It is a rational numbers with the symbol capital Q. Q which stand for, other than rational numbers, what words has to do with the symbol Q? Q for quotient or fractions or we might say division of two numbers. Another example where we have x squared minus 2 equals to 0. What is the solution for this algebraic equation? Now we have to make use of the strategy in order to find the solution, where we have to transfer the negative 2 from the left to the right. So we will obtain x squared is equal to 2. If we simplify the situation, x is equal to plus minus square root of 2. So the solution would be x is equal to plus minus square root of 2. Now the square root of 2 is not rational numbers because we can't write it in the form of fraction and we denoted it as a irrational numbers with the symbol p or we can say q bar. But widely speaking, it belongs to this class of number which is the real number or in general, we can denote it as a real number. Before we go further, let's check out what we have been talking about this for a long time. We talk about the quadratic that we have real solution and don't have real solution. Let's just take us a long way where we can do a lot of maths with real number. We still have one more row to discuss. Let's say we have x squared plus 1 equals to 0. Now, using the same kind of rules and strategy, our solution would be x is equal to plus minus square root of negative 1. Notice that this number is not real number. And we can't measure. Unlike the square root of 2 is approximately equal to 1.4142. For the square root of negative 1, it is not between any numbers that we know about up here. Unlike for the natural numbers, integers, quotient and real number can be represented in the number line. For the square root of negative 1, 
we can't place it in a number line. We have studied quadratic equation in the middle school. We say that it is does not exist. Do you still remember that while finding a solution of a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula? If the discriminant b squared minus 4ac was negative, we say that there are no real roots of the quadratic equation. Based on what we have studied earlier, x squared plus 1 is equal to 0 will not have any real roots as the value of the discriminant is negative 4. For example, where we have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, where we have the value a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to 1. So now we can substitute into the discriminant where we have b squared minus 4ac, which is equal to 0 squared minus 4 multiplied with the a, we have 1, Multiply with the c, we also have 1. So finally, the b squared minus 4ac is equal to negative 4. And we can say b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, meaning that there is no real root. Why did we do this? What was the problem here? It is easy. As the square root of the negative 1 did not exist, for us, we say that there was no solution for the equation x squared plus 1 equals to 0. However, in the 16th century, it was the mathematician named Cardan who first started to thinking about the solution of the quadratic equation with the negative discriminant. Soon, it was Euler in the 18th century who gave the square root of the negative one as a symbol i and call it as the unit imaginary number. They were terms so as they were thought to be impossible and just something that we imagine. Now, you'll be able to answer the question. Can you think of the number which when the square result is a negative number? Yes, it is i. If the square root of negative 1 is i, what is i times i or we can say it i squared? It is square root of negative 1 multiplied with the square root of negative 1. That gives us negative 1. There you go. We cut the negative number by squaring a number and the next question was can you find the solution for x squared plus 1 equals to 0? The answer is yes. Transferring the 1 to the right hand side, we get x squared equals to negative 1. Taking the square root on both sides, we get the value x is equal to square root of negative 1 or x is equal to negative square root of negative 1. That is i and negative i. So, what we learned in school wasn't incorrect. The equation has no real root. Yes, it has imaginary root. That is the concept of imaginary numbers for you. But wait, we understood the concept of square root of negative 1. What if the number is square root of negative 7 or the square root of negative 9? 